Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship time. Our candles are lit. Our Christ candle reminds us of the loving light that came into the world through Jesus. May his light continue to be reflected in our lives. And we've also lit a smaller peace candle to remind us of our call to continually pray for peace throughout the year, to share God's light with a world that desperately needs it. Welcome to Transfiguration Sunday. Isn't that a big name for this Sunday? It is the last Sunday in what we call the season after Epiphany. Next week, we start into a new time that's called Lent. The seasons of the church are a little different than the seasons in the world around us, so we kind of travel to a slightly different beat in our church year. So this time after Epiphany, we welcome everyone to this service, especially those who are visiting with us or choosing to join us online, that you may be enriched and nourished by this worship we share together. Since the weather stopped us from getting together last week, we acknowledge that last week's bulletins were provided and given in loving memory. They were all printed up and ready for you. So we acknowledge they were given in loving memory of Austin Smith, remembered by Barb Clement, Elaine and families, in memory of Myrtle Wood, remembered by Morley and Liz Wood and family, and in memory of Hubert Harvey, recalled by Aletha and family. This week, the bulletins are provided in loving memory of husband, father, Grampy Cecil, Cecil Foy, remembered by Doris and family. You will see our worship services that are coming up. Next Sunday, we have a coffee and fellowship time after service if the weather's good to us. And there is a sign-up sheet at the back, so if you're able to bring a light little cookie or something that we can share afterwards with each other, that would be wonderful. The sign-up is on that back table. I will be away on vacation. I'm with you on Sunday, but the week following, from the 20th to the 28th, Paul and I will be off island. So for pastoral emergencies, you are invited to contact the clergy of your choice or to await my return. Um, and you do have the names of our pastoral care visitors if it is some support you would like from within the congregation. We have a number of meetings coming up. Some of them have changed in time from the original postings on our Facebook page. So please take note, people listening online, our service times are, or meeting times are different than what is marked up there. Tuesday, 9.30, the Spiritual Nurture Committee is meeting. Our study and support group is not Tuesday. It's on Wednesday this week at 10 o'clock in the morning. Thursday, Christian friends meet in the morning at Sandra McDonald's. And on Thursday afternoon, pastoral care is meeting at 1.30 in the fellowship room. So lots of changes there. Please take note of that and keep that on your calendars. Senior men within the congregation, you and those who are listening online, you are invited to a free lunch that is being hosted by the Crapo community um, itself. It will be at the Crapo Community Hall February the 12th, and that is tomorrow. So it's from uh, noon until 2. If it's stormy, then it goes to the next day. But that's an open invitation for an opportunity to gather together. There are numerous other announcements. They mentioned this month's food donations, suppers at other churches, and so on. Please take those announcements home so that you will know what is happening in days ahead and which activities are ones you would like to participate within. Since time immemorial, indigenous peoples have occupied and cared for this land, the country many call Canada, from coast to coast to coast. In naming PEI as settlers, we acknowledge this area as the traditional home of the Mi'kmaq. As a community of faith, we seek to rebuild right relationships with First Nations, Métis, and Innu peoples to learn from them, 
to live on this land with respect and gratitude for its creation, its peoples, and our creator. Let us call one another to worship the God who invites us to be God's people. Your parts are written in bold print. We see God in the rising sun and in its setting. God shines forth in beauty. God opens our minds and speaks a loving word to us. Like a whirlwind, we are swept up by God's possibilities. We are given a task to keep God's light shining forth. But it can be so difficult when we return to the everyday. Let us be grateful for the holy moments that sustain us. We will hold them in our hearts and remember. A hymn that reminds us to remember of the wonder that God shows us around us is Teach Me God to Wonder. us unite our voices in a prayer we share with God. Let us pray. Your presence dazzles and amazes us, loving one. Your voice fills our longing hearts. The beauty with which you surround us inspires us. Your power gives us hope. Your promises give us confidence in our lives. So we gather caught in the wonder of all you offer to us. And we unite our prayers with the words Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A long, long time ago, there was a man called Elijah. Elijah was what's called a prophet. And a prophet is a person who speaks for God to the people. And Elijah had a student, and the student's name sounded almost like his, Elisha. So we have to keep them straight. Elijah is the prophet. Elisha is the student. And this day came that Elijah knew he was soon going to return to God. And so he began a journey. They were walking to a place called Gilgal. And as they walked, 
he said to Elisha, why don't you stay in this town? I will go the rest of this journey alone. Uh-uh, said Elisha, I will never leave you. Can you help me say that? I will never leave you. Say it with me. I will never leave you. Right. So they got to Gilgal and onward they went. And this time they went on to a place called Bethel. When they arrived in Bethel, there was a little group of people that came over and said, Elisha, you understand that Elijah will be leaving soon. Oh, yes, said Elisha, I know. And Elijah said, why don't you stay with these people here in Bethel? Mm -mm. What did Elisha say? I will never leave you. So Elijah said, okay, let's go then. On they go, this time to a place called Jericho. And they arrived in Jericho. And at Jericho, another group of people said to Elisha, you know that your teacher is going to return to God and be with God? Oh, yes, said Elisha, I know. And Elijah said, why don't you stay here in Jericho with these people? Do you think he did? No, he said, uh-uh, I will never leave you. And so Elisha went along, and this time they crossed over the Jordan River, and when they did, Elijah said, what would you like me to give to you before I have to leave? And Elisha said, you know what? I would like your spirit and courage two times as much as you have. Wow, that's a lot to ask. But, said Elijah, if you are able to see the wonder that is to happen, I think it will be so. And so, before Elisha's eyes, there was a wind that blew around them, and Elijah left. But... Elisha could see and feel that wonderful wind like a hug from God. And he knew his spirit felt strong inside. That's one story about a wonderful moment that Elisha had. There's another story of a different kind of moment, and this time it was Jesus. Jesus called a couple of friends, hey, Peter, James, John, I want you to go up with me to the mountaintop. So they hiked up to the top of the mountain, and suddenly, Jesus was all sparkly like your dress. Jesus sparkled in front of them, almost a dazzling white color, whiter than you could bleach any clothing, and they thought they could see two other people. It looked like Moses and Elijah, but they were long ago dead, but they must have been spirits that were there to help them and make them feel okay. So they said, wow, Peter said, this is really cool. I'd like to put up some tents and we can stay here on the mountaintop. But just as he said that, a cloud came over and they heard a voice that said, listen to my beloved son, Jesus. He is loved by me. Keep listening to what he teaches you. And then suddenly, everything looked like it did before. And Jesus said, come on, we have to go back down the mountain now and continue with our work. Peter, James, and John never forgot that wonderful moment when they were on the mountain and things were very sparkly and shiny. There's a picture at the back that can be colored if you want to do any coloring, it's back on the back table, and we're going to do another activity in a little while. But we're going to sing about the love of God that was with Elisha and the love of God that was with Jesus and Peter, James, and John on that mountaintop in a fun hymn called Your Love is Amazing.
The word transfiguration that we give to this Sunday is a word that means something is changed and made even more beautiful. And so, look at the tree up on this slide. Ordinarily, that tree through the winter looks pretty bare. There's no leaves on it and it can look kind of boring. But every now and then, the snow catches on it or the rain falls and it creates ice and it sparkles and it's beautiful to look at. Now, it often doesn't last for very long, does it? But we can remember how beautiful it looks days later. That's a little bit what happened with Jesus' friends. They had gone up with him on the mountain and they saw something really wonderful. We don't know exactly what was happening, whether the sun kind of beamed on Jesus at that moment and he just glowed before them. But for them, it felt like they were surrounded by something very beautiful. And it helped them later remember Hmm, it felt like God told us we're loved, that Jesus was loved, and we have to keep listening to him. It was a time that they could remember back to and feel like we can keep doing the work Jesus gave us because we remember that special moment. There is a story about an older person and a young person, and the older person was saying, I go to church every Sunday. Why do you do that, said the young person. And the older person said, well, I go every week because I go looking for a moment that will inspire me. Maybe it will be a song, or maybe it'll be a story, or somebody who speaks to me, something that will lift me up. Hmm, does that happen every time? The younger person was curious. No. Sometimes it can be weeks before I have a special moment. Then why do you keep going? Because, she said, I know that if I hold on and keep going, then that special moment will come and it will carry me until the next special moment that I have. But if I never went at all, I might miss those special moments. Elisha, and Peter, James, and John, people at different times, had special moments. Elisha, we're told in the story, felt this whirlwind around him. And the wind is actually another name that we give to God's spirit. And so it reminds us God surrounds us with a loving spirit. And Elisha wanted a strong spirit inside that would help him to carry on. So we hold on to that love and that spirit and special moments that are with us. Today, we are going to make some sparkly hearts. Would anybody like to come up and help me make some sparkly hearts? Great. And I have some hearts that we're going to stick on the sparkly ones. So you can each have a heart here. There we go. And which color would you like? We've got sparkly glue. Lovely. Would you like to try one too? Yeah. You take one. Do you want to come on up? Come on up and help. Would you like this one? Okay. You can start on this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the tops off and we're going to make some little dots like that. And... Then we're going to scoop out some sparkly hearts that we can use. Do you like the red ones? Yeah. Let's put a red one on here. And that'll stick on the sparkles. Should we put some more? Yeah. You want to put some more there? How about, do you want to stick some of them in the middle? There we go. Stick some more on. Oh, some more. Let's do some more. Now, this reminds us, all these sparkles and hearts, that things that we do 
for other people can help their hearts fill up and feel like they're sparkly and like they have special moments. One of the things that we do in church is we have something that is called mission and service. And when people put money in their offering plate that's at the back, yeah, that pretty, I don't have any up here, the, the gold bowl that's at the back, when people put their money in what we call their offering in there, some of those offerings go to help people far away. There are people a year ago, last February, they had what was called an earthquake in their country. And so some people's homes got damaged and schools and things, and it was a pretty tough time. So we send some money over to help them, and our partners over there are helping them to pay for their rent so they can stay in their home, or they help them to get food so they can eat, and they do other things too, like medicine that they might need. So when we do that, that helps their lives to sparkle and to feel happy inside. I wonder, are there other things we can do that help people feel sparkly inside and happy? What's something we can do? I wonder, maybe... Should we ask some of the big folks out here to see if they can give us an idea? What kinds of things can we do to help spread sparkles in the world? Sparkles of love. Tell people we appreciate them. Oh, tell somebody, I'm really glad you're here today. Or to say, Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you to Susan for the music she played while we were all gathering. Thank you to Jack and to John who help everybody to hear what I'm saying. Can you think of something else? Do you ever help mom with doing dishes? No. No, okay. You'll get bigger and I bet mom will help ask for your help. Um, does anybody make their bed yet? Help with that? Sometimes, maybe? We're going to have ideas to go home and remember. Yes, tell her more. <laughs> so, we'll tell you lots more. How about, do you ever fold towels and help mom fold towels when she does the laundry? No. <gasps> that can be fun. It's really fun to fold the towels. Yeah. What about, hmm, does anybody else have some ideas? What else? A hug. Giving somebody a hug, that makes them feel warm and sparkly inside. And you know what? Sometimes when we go to the grocery store or places like that, there's something that you can do that's called a shout out. And we don't even know a lot of people because Maybe somebody was really good and they packed my groceries for me and they took care of me and were very smiley and nice to me. And I can do what's called shout out to them. I can say, oh, I was really glad that you were my server today. And I call in or I give a shout out and they get a little bonus for their work. And it lets them know somebody appreciated them. We can give a shout out to each other saying thank you for things. Thank you to your Grammy for bringing you today. Anything else you can think of? Hmm. Spending time with other people. Oh, spending time with people. Yeah, sharing time together. That makes people really happy inside. I like to play games, and every week my daughter comes over and we play games. And that's a lot of fun. And that makes me feel really happy inside. And listening to people. Listening to people. Yeah, just listening. Listening to stories that they share or something they tell you. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. You can take your sparkly hearts back with you. They might have to dry. Maybe we'll, Maybe we'll leave them here and you can get it after the service, okay? Talk to the pews. Yes. <laughs> we'll leave them here until they dry, okay? We're going to listen to the choir 
share a special song with us. give so that we may be a part of shining God's love into the lives of those who long to be lifted up. May what we share strengthen those who need it and bring healing to those who are hurting. Loving and caring God, receive our gifts and let your light shine through us. Amen. Our offertory hymn reminds us that Jesus' hands were kind hands and we continue his work. There is another thing I would like to share with you today, and it's a way that we can say prayers. And our prayers are a way that we can sparkle hope and love into the world. So we're going to hold up our hands, and we're going to start with our little finger. So at the top of our little finger, we think of all the little things in life. What are some little things we'd like to say thank you for? 
food, family, homes, warmth, Sunshine. sunshiny day, snow for playing in, making snow people, angels, trees that look real pretty. So lots of little things that we can be thankful for. But now slide down. Up, we're in the valley. And the valley can be things that are tough. So sometimes little things bug us, don't they? Little things that people say might bother us. And so we ask for God's help with those little things that are tough. But if we go back up to the next finger, that's our finger that reminds us of all the people that we love, that are a part of our lives. So we say thank you for our families and our friends, people at school. We can have lots of people that we love. Oops, we're going down the valley again. Hmm, sometimes it can be tough at home with our families too. Sometimes things happen, maybe somebody is sick. Maybe somebody got angry and we feel hurt. Maybe somebody didn't pick up their toys and we're frustrated. There can be lots of things, can't there, that cause us to feel upset. And so we ask God, help us to remember the love when we're down in the valley. And now we go back up again. And at the top of our big finger, we remember some of the big and powerful people in life, some of the leaders in our communities and in our world and we remember those who are doing good things for us and helping us in lots of ways down the valley we remember some people who maybe need a little bit of guidance and help because they're not leading us in ways that help our world so we remember those people too and then we come back up and the pointer finger is about the people who teach us and help us to learn good things, like teachers. Maybe it's a friend who teaches us, or a group, or a dance club, or something that we're part of, and they point us to good things in our lives. And then we go down the valley, and we remember sometimes people don't teach us good things. And so we pray for those people too. But when we come back up, where's our thumb pointing? It's pointing right back at me, isn't it? When you look at your thumb, the last thing we share with God is ourselves. And we say, God, help me to remember the spirit you give to me strong inside. Thank you for the me that I am. I'm pretty sparkly and awesome. Every one of us is loved by God. And guess what? When we remember that, there's nowhere to go down. We stay up and remember all the good things. So we offer these prayers to God today. And when we keep praying, keep shining our love, we march in the light of God. Let us sing our final song.
May we keep marching in that light of God, keep our hearts a sparkle and a glow with the love God shares with us and love that we can share with the world around us. For when we do, the whole world is changed, transfigured by all the possibilities God gives to us. Let us walk with one another in love and light.